So good afternoon, everyone. So as we gather here today to worship our God, and we are here in the midst of Thanksgiving season, it reminds us to count our blessings. How many blessings we have received in these days, in this year, or in this month. So this is a time for reflection and thinking back and looking back to our lives. Maybe every day or every moment, every hour, or last week, or last month, and seeing the invisible hand of God, how He was bringing His blessings in our day-to-day -day lives. So today we are going to see from the book of James, chapter 1, verse 17, and it reminds us that all good things in our lives comes from our loving God. James chapter 1 verses uh, 17, you can turn your Bible and we can read this Bible passage together. So ready? Okay, let's read together. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like city serves. Amen. Our sermon title is Every Good Thing Comes from God. And Bible text, James chapter 1, verse 17. As we explore James chapter 1, verse 17 today, we will see three truths about God's gift and how they save our day-to-day -day lives. There is a question for you. Would you like to receive gift? Do you love to receive gift from your friends or your families? Is there someone here who says like, I don't love gift? All of you. Do you love receiving gift? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. Do you like to give? Oh, yes. Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> Wonderful man. Usually people don't like to give or want to receive. There is no one, I think, who doesn't like to receive gift. We love to receive gift, and in the exchange, sometimes we also give our gifts to other people as appreciation, as expressing our love, our thankfulness. When we love other people, and it's an action that shows our love and thankfulness through that gift which we give to them. When you receive the gift, you feel happy. Am I right? You feel happy and you feel joyful. Your mood changes. Maybe we are, you were unhappy, but the time you receive gift, that changes your perspective. That changes your thoughts. That changes your mind and that changes your heart. And you feel happy. And you feel joyful. And you feel like appreciated. You feel like loved. When you give gift to someone else, that shows that you are loving that person. And you admire that person. You appreciate that person. If you don't like someone, you don't give gift. Do you? No. If you don't like the person, you don't want to give the gift. Whenever you give the gift, that means you love that person. You like that person. And you appreciate that person. So let's see three points and which may help us to understand this message. The first is God is the source of all goodness. And the second is the unchanging nature of God. And the third is responding with gratitude. When we receive a gift from God and it's our response, we should respond it with gratitude. Let's see the first point. God is the source of all goodness. In James chapter 1 verse 17, it shows here all the good things that we receive in our lives that comes from God. He is the source of all blessings. So there are two Greek words, another language. We are learning in this and another language here comes from Greek. So there are two Greek words, dosis and dorina, they have different meaning. 
even though in the English we can see just the English word kit, but in the original Greek language we can see there are two different words used for same word gift. Dosis, it refers to the act of giving. There in the phrase we can see there every good gift and every perfect gift. Here, the gift, dosis, means the act of giving. It shows the giving nature of God. Even though there is gift is written, but it's about giving character of God. His nature of giving. The act of giving. And the second word, Dorema, it emphasizes the gift we receive from God is complete. It's perfect. It suits to our daily needs. It perfectly matches to our circumstances. The gift we receive from God is different. The gift someone else is receiving from God. Sometimes we may say that God is giving so good things in someone else's life. Sometimes we become, we admire that is good thing, but sometimes more than that we become jealous. We envy. But the word of God reminds here that the person who has received the gift from God that perfectly matches in his life or in her life to bring fulfillment the plan of God in their lives. And the gift which I have, the talents, the gifts, the strengths, the abilities which I have or which you have, God has given you perfectly, completely to fulfill His plans and His purpose in your individual life. So, from this nature we can see that God is the one who gives and God is the one who gives perfectly what matches in your lives. Let's say about His character. So God gives his gifts of blessings based on his character, not our character. Let's think about our character. What is our character? Do we always do good things to God? Do we always obey the word of God? No. We many times we fail. Not sometimes, many times. We many times we fail to follow, to obey the will of God in our day-to-day -day lives. But still he blesses us. Still he gives his gifts of blessings. For example, in the Old Testament, we can see there when Israelites were passing through wilderness, frequently they were disobedient. They were having a lack of faith. They were not trusting upon the God's provision. But still, even in the time, 40 years of wilderness journey, God was faithful. God was every day blessed them with manna and food and water and drinks and meat, whatever they need. But when we see the character of Israelites, it's not like appreciative, appreciative. It's not like praiseworthy. They were failing every day, day by day. But it's because of God's character. He was faithful and he was faithful to his promise. So God blesses us based on his character, not your character and not my character. For example, just remember when you wake up in the morning, until now, how many times did we give thanks to God for every single blessing that we have received? Did we? No? Just the water comes before us, just the food comes before us, we just grab it and eat fill our stomach. Sometimes we fail to say that, okay, thank you Lord for providing this meat, this food. When we are reading, studying, or when we are buying something, when we are doing something, many times we fail to acknowledge that this gift has come from God. Even in that time, God, because of His character, He blesses us. And He is continuously blessing us. So reflect our lives and cultivate a heart of gratitude. Rather than we say that I own this, I made this happen, 
Let's say that thank you God for this provision. Thank you for providing this blessing in my life. When we say that, it changes our perspective. It brings joy and it brings us to dependency upon God rather than self-reliance in our lives. It brings us to the point that we trust upon our God rather than trusting upon our self-strength. So second is the unchanging nature of God. In James chapter 1 verse 17, James says here, God does not change like sitting shadows. You know shadows changes. It changes the position, it changes the direction. When we put up a light, when the light moves, shadows moves, shadows changes. But God is not like the sitting shadows. God does not change. God does not change in His faithful promises, in His covenant, in His love. He's always loving us. He's loving children. He's always sending His blessings. Even though we change, even though our mood changes, even though our heart changes, even though our level of love changes, level of dedication to His love changes. But God, He doesn't change His character. Yesterday and today and forever, He remains the same. In the Malachi, chapter 3, verse 6 says, I, the Lord, do not change. And in the New Testament, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, it says here, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God's love, His promises, and His goodness do not change according to our circumstances. We are a changeable creation. Even if small things can change our attitude toward God, our love toward God. If something we are desiring and God is not allowing you to receive that, our level of love goes down. When He blesses and we are happy, that time our love, level of love and level of dedication goes high. We are so happy. Feels like I want to finish this reading, reading the whole Bible in one month. That kind of excitement it comes. But when again the situation changes, when we are going through hardships and sufferings, and when we are going through disappointment with our life, with our career, with our studies, the things which we were expecting was not happen in that time of day. We do not feel like praying. We do not feel like going to church. We do not feel like having joy of the Lord. Our situation is always changing. The day changes, mind changes. But God, whatever we are, whatever nature or character is ours, but God is always loving and kind and faithful, and He gives the perfect blessings what we need in the right time. Even though sometimes we don't know what, shall we pray? What do we need to pray? Maybe we are praying for something, but God is, giving, God is willing to give another thing. We do not know what to pray for us. We just think that, okay, this is good for me, that's why we pray for that thing. But we do not know that things is going to bring curse or blessing in our life. But the God who sees all future, all life, He knows what is best for you at the right time. And He provides the best gift that you need in that time. Thirdly, when we move, knowing that God is the source of all blessings, even though our nature changes, His nature is unchanging, He remains sense. That's why He blesses all. That's why He always blesses. Just think about this whole month. We didn't gather here to worship, right? So, just because of that, God stopped His blessing. God stopped sending His blessing to your life. No. We receive the food. We have the loving family. We have our strength, health, good mind. We are not crazy. We have wisdom. We have strength. We have work. We have money. We have all the resources to run our life, everything. 
But we didn't worship gathering here every Sunday for about a month. About a month. But it's still, God is blessing and blessing me. Because of what? Because of His unceasing character. So let's not think that if I worship God, He will bless me more. If I worship less, He will bless me less. It doesn't happen like that. The way we come to worship God is to acknowledge Him. God, you are the giver. You are the gift giver in my life. Whatever I have has come from you. And I want to acknowledge and give you thanks. And I want to respond with gratitude. The third point is respond with gratitude. When we think about the blessings how God has given in our life, then our response should be gratefulness. I am grateful. I am thankful. Just as we sang the song before, I am here because of His grace. I am here because of His love. So we are gathered here by acknowledging that we are here because of His unchanging love, because of His unfailing grace. And we want to take this moment to show our gratefulness toward Him. God, maybe we sometimes we may fail to acknowledge in a right way, but we want to take this moment to exalt Him, to praise Him, and to worship Him, and give Him thanks, even though we did not do some of the days of this week, but we want to take this moment and lift Your name and give Him thanks. So gratitude is an act of worship. So gratitude is not just like saying thank you to God, thank you God. It shows that your heart is full of worship. It shows that your heart is full of praise, full of appreciation. You want to acknowledge. You are aware of receiving from God. You are not just taking for granted. You are not thinking that I deserve it. We do not deserve any goodness from God. The thing which we deserve in our life is the wrath of God and judgment. Instead of that, because of God's Son Jesus, who died on the cross, He opened the source of all goodness. He opened the source of all blessings that is coming constantly, continuously from above to our life. So how can we respond? Not being grateful. The bread we take, the food we eat, the place where we live, the people who are here to love us, our response should be gratefulness, thankfulness, the heart of gratitude. Because every good gift and every perfect gift God has designed in our life. If we see the historical context of this book, James, he wrote this letter to the believers who were going through trials and persecutions. And even in that time, James reminds these people who are going through sufferings, be grateful. Because of what? Persecution? Because of suffering? No. Because of God's unchanging nature. Because of God's promises. His love. His faithfulness. He is the God who was faithful in your joyful time. And He is the God who will be faithful in this suffering time. And He is the God who will be faithful in the future time. Therefore, be grateful. Therefore, everything, whatever we have received, has come from God. So that is the reminder of James to these believers who are going through persecutions, who are going through tears and suffering. We don't know what kind of situation we are going through, but the Word of God reminds us. Even the time of persecution, even the time of disappointment, God can turn every situation into goodness in your life, in my life. Even though we feel like, how can this turn into goodness? There is a God who is almighty and who is always longing to bless us with His goodness. He can turn every situation into good 
for his glory, for our joy. Therefore, we can respond, even in every situation, in all sorts of instances, with a grateful heart, with a gratitude. We can give thanks to him through our prayer, our praise, our worship, our generous acts of service, being kind to other people, sharing the blessing God has given, and we can share it with other people. We can show our greatness, our gratitude to God is our response while receiving His gift. So let's reflect in this time, in this season, that whatever I have has come from God and He is continuously blessing me, not because of my nature, but because of His unchanging nature. And our response should be gratitude. That shows the true mark of His children, loving children. Because God is always generous and He's giving, and we should imitate that character. We, sh we should open our heart and hands, and we may give and share with other people. So, no matter where you are in life, remember this truth that every good and perfect gift comes from God. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you with hearts full of gratitude. Thank you for every blessing, every opportunity, and every moment of your grace in our lives. Help us to recognize your hand in all that we have and to respond with lives marked by thanksgiving. May our gratitude bring glory to you and draw others to your goodness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.